Hello everyone, welcome in the beautiful Mont-Tremblant ski resort. This is the second part of my comparison of my Google Pixel 4a, which is a $350 phone, with my $3,500 Canon 6D Mark II DSLR. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Lloyd Ben Mahalford, a young photographer and filmmaker on the journey to become better at this art. In my last comparison video, I focused on the computational photography of the Google Pixel 4a versus the default pictures we get with the Canon 6D Mark II. In this video, I want to step up the game and talk about the raw files that we get on both cameras. Now let's start by talking about what are raw files and how they're created. I like talk, taking the analogy of a cake to talk about them, uh, where the raw file is like if you have all your ingredients ready to create the cake, and a JPEG is actually the cake that is fully baked afterwards, uh, where you don't have any possibility to change anything. So with the raw ingredients, you can still change the recipe if you want, so it's the same thing with a picture. The raw files are not created the same way depending on the camera. So for example, on my DSLR, they take the value of every single pixel on the sensor and they save that raw information inside of the file. On my Google Pixel, it's a little bit more fancy what they do to get better results, where they take this information of every single pixel on the sensor, but they also take multiple pictures uh, with the same exposure and then use a technique that is called averaging, where they take the average value of every single pixel on the picture to create the final results. And this allows to have a little bit more information in the parts of the pictures that are darker uh, or in the parts where you have the highlights and you get rid of a lot of the noise when doing this technique because you get the average value for every single shot instead of having only one pixel and the information from there. So we're gonna see if this actually helps getting the shot or not. In this first test shot, I want to test the dynamic range of the two raw files. So in here we have the bottom that is pretty dark with the trees, and then we have the white of the snow that is really bright. So we're going to see how much information both raw files can capture. So let's take the shot. Okay, so in this example, I want to see how it's going to work if I ever expose the shots. We have a lot of white here, so it's a good example for this. So I'm first going to take a normal shot with the good exposure on my camera here. So I'm just going to go and grab it here. Take the same shot using my cell phone. And we have both shots. Now I'm going to come inside of my DSLR and overexpose it of, by one stop. I'm going to come back here, take the shot and come on my Google Pixel phone right here. And I'm gonna go on the screen here and bring up both sliders to have it overexposed to see if we can recover the detail afterwards. So I'm gonna take the picture here and I'm gonna see afterward if it's possible to recover that information in the raw file. For this next example, I wanna talk about how the Google Pixel 4 gets the pictures. So when it stacks all the pictures together, it actually reduces the exposure a little bit. And by reducing the exposure, they're sure to get the detail inside of the highlights of the picture and never blow the highlights. Because if you blow the highlights, you cannot really recover them, even if it's a raw file. So in this example, I wanna set my camera also to lower uh, the f-stop to make a test and see if it helps my DSLR to use the same trick. So let's take the picture, Just I'm just gonna set up here the exposure and reduce it by one stop. Take the picture here of the chairs in the fog. Here we go. And I'm gonna try to get the same shot here. For the last comparison shot here, we have a pretty complex scene with the snow in the background and all the detail inside of the decoration in front. So we're gonna come here with the Google Pixel 4 it. We're gonna stop the first shot here. I'm just gonna put it away and go for the second shot with the DSLR. And here we have our two shots and ready to compare them. 
We're now done with our ski day. We're gonna head back home and I'm gonna take a few pictures at night to see how it performs in harsher conditions. I just took a few pictures of the sunset that is behind me here. They're not the best sunset shots, but they should be pretty good examples of how the rocks are performing with all the dynamic range, range we have inside of the scene. Okay, so for this last test shot, we're gonna have a pretty complex one. And in here, I'm not sure if you can see, but I have Christmas lights in the background here and my cottage. And these are gonna create very really bright parts inside of the pictures. And then because we're in the middle of the night, all of the rest of this picture is gonna be pretty dark. So it's really gonna create a huge contrast in terms of bright part in the picture and really dark ones. For my cameras here, I have the Google Pixel 4a on a tripod and also I have the Canon 60 Mark II right under. And I know that the Google Pixel 4 because it's on a tripod, it's gonna use its astrophotography mode and that means it's gonna take 16 seconds shutter uh, speed photos and it's gonna take multiple photos and merge them together afterwards. So I'm gonna go on my camera and also set it manually to 16 seconds to be sure we have the sh same shutter speed on both cameras so we get similar results in the end. So let me set this up, take the two pictures and we're gonna see the results. I honestly thought this would be a super easy win for my DSLR, but looking at the shots on my cameras, I'm actually not really sure uh, which one has better raw file inside of it. So we're gonna have to go inside, go in Lightroom, and really look at the files to see which one is better. So let's see you uh, inside. Before starting to compare these shots, I want to let you know that there's a link in the description down below where you can find all the high resolution edited shots and even some of the raw files. I will be talking about editing techniques I use when editing my shots and I also already edited all of the shots to speed up the process a little bit. If you want to learn more how I edit my shots, you can check out my editing videos to learn more about that. It would also be a great time to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by talking about how to recover your exposure because this is probably the main reason why you want to be using a raw file. So if we take the Canon shot and you can look at the corner here and see that's a .cr2 so that's a Canon file and if it's .dng that's a pixel file we can actually see that if we come here and move the exposure we have a lot of information inside of the sky and also inside of the shadows. So if we come in here and we apply the edit we're gonna see it looks pretty good. And now if we come on the pixel shot, you might realize that it's a lot more overexposed and it might be scary at first, but that's totally normal. All the Canon RAW files are overexposed. So if we come in here and we bring down the exposure, we can see we're able to recover a lot of that information. One thing to look to is the snow here. So snow is really easy to overexpose. So if you bring down the exposure here, so if I go back at the beginning, we can see it was completely overexposed. And if we bring it down, we get all the details inside of here. And if we bring down the highlights, we can see we can recover even more information. If I apply the edit here, we're gonna see that if we look at the pixel shot here that we have, and we look at the Canon shot, they look very similar, so we can edit them and get very similar result. Now if we look at our overexposed shot, so here I have my Canon shot that was overexposed by one stop, and we come inside of the light, so if we look at the snow again, we're gonna see it's a little bit overexposed. But if we bring down the exposure, we can see that now we have more detail inside of the bottom here, and if we bring down the highlights, we have even more information. If we look at the pixel shot, it might look like if it's totally uh, bad and it's not impossible to recover, but actually because it's a raw file, you can come here on the slider, bring this down almost three stops, bring down the highlights, and you still have all this information inside of the snow here, which is pretty impressive. Uh, so if I apply the edits here again to these two shots, we're gonna see again, they look very similar um, between the two. So we have the pixel shot here, the Canon shot, 
and then we have the original pixel shot and the Canon shot that were well exposed and they all look the same and this shows how much information you can recover using a RAW file. Now I want to talk about why you should be using RAW because I think some people still don't understand what's the difference between a RAW and a JPEG shot. So I have my only JPEG shot in here uh, for this edit. So we're going to go inside of the light here and bring down the exposure like we did with the previous shots. And now if we look at this shot, it actually looks pretty bad. So if we look at the center here, there's a big circle that is orange, which really doesn't look good. Then if we look at the snow at the bottom here, we did recover some of the details, but now we have some blue and some pink artifacts, which just doesn't look good. And the trees just look terribly bad. Another thing to look to is if you look at the sky here, you can see that the sky has also these weird artifacts inside of them. And if we compare this sky with the raw picture, we can see the raw picture looks 100% natural, where this JPEG shot just doesn't look as good. Now, if we move on uh, to the next shots here, we can see that these were underexposed. So the pixel actually underexposed because it's easier to uh, recover shadows and highlights. So if we bring back up this Canon shot for more exposure, we can see we still have all the detail, uh, even if it was underexposed by one shot. Uh, the pixel shot was rightly exposed, so if we bring it down a little bit, we can see again, it works quite well. Now if we come here and we apply these uh, edits, we're going to see again, they look pretty similar between the two here. Now let's talk about why you should care taking raw pictures. For me, the reason I think raw pictures are super important is for example, when I used to do events, especially when I had a flash on my camera, I would go inside of the event take some pictures and usually when you take pictures during the event you don't look at your results right afterwards on your camera screen because you're taking the most pictures possible during the event and sometimes by accident uh, either if I'm in manual settings or if in uh, automatic metering modes it would automatically uh, overexpose or underexpose some of my shots especially when I had a flash and that meant that I would come back home and have some of my pictures that were completely overblown or some of my pictures that were underexposed and I had to recover all the details inside of the shots and this is where uh, raw pictures really come handy because if you had JPEGs, you probably just wouldn't be able to do that. Another reason that's really important is that if you're taking astrophotography shots or things like that, where you need to get the most information out of the sensor, you really want to have a raw file to be able to afterwards take out all these details from the picture. It's a little bit different with a phone because the phone usually has an automatic metering mode and the automatic metering is actually really good on the phones usually. So it's not as much of a problem, but it's still something to keep in mind when you're taking raw pictures. Now let's move on and talk about dynamic range because this is pretty important inside of raw files. So if we look at a Canon shot, we can see right away there's a lot of information inside of the highlights and the shadows. And if we come here and apply the edit, we can see we can recover even more information inside of the trees here and inside of the highlights, both in the snow and the sky. And if we come on the pixel shot, it like, might look a little bit uh, bad at the beginning, but again, if we apply the edit here, we can see we have a lot of details inside of the bottom here. We don't have much noise inside of the trees and the top part looks pretty good. So for both shots, it's pretty good. Now if we move on to a second example here, we're going to see this is a pretty complex shot with all the colors in the foreground and the very um, bright parts inside of the snow and the clouds. And there's a very small difference if we look at both shots here. And it's that at the top here, the pixel in the clouds has a little bit less information, but it's a very subtle difference. And if we come at the light here, we cannot really recover more. We could bring down the exposure, but the highlights are already down completely. So it's not really something we can do, but that's a pretty small difference. Where there's a bigger difference is inside of this example where I have a sunset. So for here, I want to recover the most information possible inside of the dark parts and inside of the shadows inside of the color. So if we bring down the highlights here on the Canon shot, we can see we can recover all the colors inside of the highlights of the shots. And if we bring up the shadows completely, we can see we can recover all the colors and all the detail inside of the shadows. And if we zoom in inside of here, we can see the image is still perfectly clear and very uh, nice. There's not much noise or anything like that. Now if we come on a pixel shot here and we bring down the highlights and bring down the shadows, you might realize right away there's a lot less color inside of both of them. So there doesn't seem to be as much color information inside of the highlights and the shadows when you bring them to the maximum. It's not something I do all the time, but sometimes it happens in a situation like a sunset. It's actually something you might want to be able to do. So it's something to keep in mind. This brings me to the point that surprised me the most and it's how much different the colors look on both shots. So if we come inside of the Canon shot here, we can see there's a lot of detail uh, inside of the colors, inside of the highlights and the shadows and just looks very natural in the end. Where the pixel is a little bit lifeless, it's missing a little bit of saturation and 
little bit of color. If we come inside of other shots here, we can see it's the same scenario here uh, between these two shots where the cannon shot looks a little bit better. One thing is that you can recover the colors inside of Lightroom pretty easily when it's a raw, so you could bring out the vibrance a little bit more and you could tweak a color temperature between the shot to uh, fix it. Same thing when you come inside of this shot here, we can see that the colors here look a lot more natural inside of the trees here, uh, a little bit more orange and uh, a little bit warmer. We look at this shot, it's a lot colder and not as good looking. And this comes from ca sensor calibration. So you have different sensors that calibrate your raw files in a different way. So this is something that's pretty easy to fix, but it's something that just you need to keep in mind that when you take a picture with a pixel phone, you're gonna have to work a little bit more afterwards to be able to fix it. Now if we come in the next thing I wanna talk about, and it's probably the, uh, the worst part of the pixel raw files, and it's the detail inside of the shot. So if we zoom inside of this shot here on the Canon shot, we can see that all the branches look very natural. There's detail, but it's not over sharpened. Where if we come inside of the pixel shot here, when we zoom in, we can see it's completely over sharpened. Now where it becomes very impressive is when we look at these night shots. So if I come inside of this shot here and bring up the exposure of the Canon shot, we can see we can recover a lot of the details inside of the background here of all these branches and everything. And if we look at the top here, we can see there isn't much noise at all inside of the shot, even if we brought it up almost two full stops. And now if we come on the pixel shot, we can also bring up the exposure here and see that we recover a lot of the detail inside of the branches at the top here. But there is a little bit more uh, noise inside of the pixel shot and there's a little bit more color noise, which is a little bit worse. But overall, it's still pretty uh, clean shot. And now if we look at the highlights here, it might be scary because the highlights are completely overblown. But if we apply the edit here and have a right exposure for our shots on both pictures, you can see that the Canon shot here can recover pretty much everything inside of this shot. And same thing for um, the Pixel shot. So they're both pretty impressive. There's one place that even if you take a raw file, a DSLR is still gonna be a lot better. And that's for depth of field. So if we look at the depth of field here on this shot of my dog, we can see we have a nice blurry background. But if we compare it to the other shot here uh, from my Google Pixel, we can see the background is not as blurry and not as pleasing to look. Same thing for this shot here. So this is the one from the Pixel. It looks actually pretty good. But now if we look at the shot from the Canon DSLR, it's just a lot better. Again, if we come inside of portrait, so uh, portrait mode doesn't uh, output a raw file on the Google Pixel. So if we look at the background here, we can see it's actually perfectly in focus and the face is also pretty in focus. But if we look at the shot from uh, the DSLR, again, the background is just out of blurred and a lot of better looking. So there is still a difference between the two and there are some things that raw files on cameras cannot change in the end. I was honestly really surprised by the results I got. The fact that I can edit both pictures using the raw files and get almost identical shots is super surprising to me. I want to finish by telling this. I make these videos because I'm really surprised of the results I'm getting, not to try to say if a phone or a DSLR are better. The DSLR has relied on a bigger sensor and bigger lenses for generations and produced consistent better results. On the other hand, phones use computational photography, including photo stacking, algorithms, and all kinds of crazy stuff to get better results. I think it's important to remember that none of these are better and it depends on the context you're using them. So sometimes using a phone is better, sometimes using a DSLR is better. Also, both of them are tools and in photography, the tool doesn't really matter. It's the result you're getting. So as long as you're satisfied with the result you're getting from both cameras, they're, they're both tools that work perfectly well. This is also the reason why on Instagram, I don't post which camera I used to take the pictures because I care about the result, not the tool I used to get there. Talking of Instagram, if you wanna come and say hi, come and write a message. I try answering to all of them on that platform. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like below. It really does help the channel. Also, if you watched the video until now and still haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that big red subscribe button. I have a lot of good content planned for 2021, so be sure to be part of this community. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.